On November 1st, 1986, at the Schweitzer Hall industrial area just outside of Basel, Switzerland, a catastrophic fire enveloped the Sandoz chemical plant when over 1,000 tons of pesticide caught fire. This tragic incident remains shrouded in mystery as, to this day, the cause of the fire remains unknown. As the fire rapidly spread and overtook several buildings within the facility, almost setting fire to the entire facility, firefighters arrived at the scene to combat the blaze. In their efforts to extinguish the flames, they used fire retardant foam, which inadvertently caused pesticides and other hazardous chemicals from the Sandoz chemical plant to spill into the Rhine River. This spillage had an instant and horrifying effect turning the waters of the historic Rhine red and causing rampant environmental damage, including nearly wiping out all of the eel population within the Rhine and affecting the water supply of multiple countries. The pollution from this environmental catastrophe spread as far as 400 kilometers or 248 miles down the Rhine River, killing an estimated 150,000 eels along with countless other fish and river-dwelling creatures in the area. Dutch officials reported mercury levels at the German border three times the normal level within a week of the accident. Dutch, German, and French populations were directly affected by this accident at a Swiss chemical plant. As Switzerland famously sits atop the Alps and being home to one of the tallest mountains in Europe, the effects of what happens in this region will literally be felt downstream. The lack of communication and cooperation between the affected countries makes this disaster particularly unique and troubling. Despite the incident occurring on the Swiss-German border, which is a region known for its rigorous environmental standards and shared natural resources, the event had significant repercussions for the typically neighborly countries. These repercussions included the aforementioned near decimation of the eel population in the Rhine, a river that is vital for local economies. The lack of coordination and the ensuing chaos highlighted the critical need for better international collaboration and stricter regulations for managing environmental disasters. It quickly became evident that without a unified approach, individual efforts, specifically when left in control of a corporation that does not care about you or the environment or anything other than short-term profits, were insufficient to mitigate the damage and prevent future catastrophes. When the incident unfolded, Sandoz was quick to dismiss concerns and skirt responsibility with a spokesperson for Sandoz initially dismissing the color of the river as, quote, harmless color agent. But this was quickly rebuffed when hundreds of thousands of dead marine life started floating to the surface of the Rhine. In the immediate aftermath of the accident, Sandoz tried to quell concerns about what was actually being released into the environment, which later turned out to be various agricultural chemicals and over 440 pounds of mercury. The unbothered response from the Swiss government can best be summed up with a quote from an official of the Swiss League for the Protection of the Environment at the time, who said, quote, You can't compare this with Chernobyl, because there, a catastrophe happened. Here, it didn't. Not yet. One of the problems that ended up presenting itself is that on the exact day of the Sandoz chemical accident, another Swiss chemical plant had a leak that also spilled into the Rhine. The other Swiss chemical plant eventually admitted that the herbicide atrazine, which was found in the Rhine, was released by them, Siba Geigy. Siba claimed only 400 quarts of atrazine leaked into the river while West German scientists argued that the amount of chemicals in the river could only reach the levels they were at by a steady stream of dumping chemicals into the river. And honestly, I struggle to say this with a straight face. Still, an investigation into the cause of the accident was wrapped up in 1992 with no answers, no concrete steps to hold responsible parties accountable, and of course, no negative repercussions for Sandoz. And that was it, for a while. Until, 14 years later, Vincent Canestraro who is the former director of intelligence programs for the National Security Council, entered the chat. If you remember the Iran-Contra affair and the Lockerbie bombing incident, those were significant incidents that Vincent oversaw in his former post. Either way, in 2000, Canestraro made a surprising and currently unproven allegation. He proposed that the KGB had orchestrated the attack by commissioning the East German Ministry of State Security commonly known as the Stasi, to sabotage the Sandoz chemical plant. According to this theory, the motive behind this attack was to shift global attention away from the Chernobyl disaster, which had occurred approximately six months earlier. This theory, while never proven, added a new layer of complexity to the already intricate political web of Cold War espionage and geopolitical posture. In all, after one of the largest man-made disasters in European history, only two firefighters were charged over the Rhine pollution. This resulted from their actions while fighting the blaze, which inadvertently led to the spread of contamination downstream. Despite the severity of the situation and the widespread environmental damage caused, Sandoz management was never held accountable. Before the incident, it was alleged that Sandoz failed to implement adequate safety measures at the facility. During the incident, their response was insufficient, filled with, at best, optimistic miscalculations and at worst, deliberate falsehoods. The negligence and oversight from Sandoz management played a crucial role in the disaster, yet they faced no legal repercussions. 